back and turn that off right now. Slightly quieter. Yep. Yep. We're going to do it. All right, so this is our vibration table. Um, it does vibration and shock. Um, Swept sign, random, sign on random, random on random. Uh, really any vibration or shock profile you can think of, um, we could run on this. Uh, it's controlled by the computer here. Uh, it uses a few controller telerometers on it, which actually determines the level. Um, it runs off the amplifier. And the entire armature is actually supported on a large airbag. Uh, so when it, the, the armature goes up and down, there's an airbag underneath that controls the rebound. So it's essentially like a, a, a spring. So we're just going to do a really simple um, sign sweep on this. Uh, kind of demonstrates how different frequencies have different effects on modes on different parts of the unit. So this one in general is relatively low level because I don't want to break the drone that's on there. Um, but you can see how the different modes interact, how the isolators on the battery and control pack um, kind of isolate the, that part from the rest of the vibration and how the modes set up in the tips um, just because of, of uh, the inherent resonances of it. 810G updated that to 24 in, 24 out, 24 in, 24 out because it's actually the drying cycle it has more of an effect on the uh, uh, corrosion. So there are some other standards. Um, I don't recall the one. It's a 28-day test, but essentially you spray the unit with salt water for two hours, and then you stick it in the chamber for seven days. It's a very low impact, um, low impact corrosion test. So, so basically, it has a salt uh, tube two Up, but you know, yeah, it's really not much time, guys. Yeah, you want to take a tent chamber? Yeah, okay. Um, so the large chamber over here, it's in use right now, um, but it's a combined temperature and humidity chamber, uh, walk in size, so relatively large. Um, we can load things in there, uh, forklift size, we put in there, um, or load it in with the forklift rather, um, to high volume. Um, many small things essentially. We've done uh, tests with racks of units in there that are um, PCB sized, very small. Um, but all of these chambers, they all they all essentially do the same thing. Uh, this is a temperature and humidity. Uh, the light blue is a temperature and humidity and the small white chamber is also temp humidity. And that just kind of allows us to tailor. If you've got a very small unit, there's no point running it in the chamber that's significantly oversized. And the smaller the chamber, we also get better granular control of the temperature and humidity. The walk-in is good, but it's got a slower response rate than, say, the white chamber, because you've got a lot less airspace in the white chamber than the walk-in. Um, uh, it, it kind of varies. It's really standard and equipment dependent on which one we use, which one works the best. Um, the chamber at the very end down there is a temperature and altitude chamber. It'll go up to 100,000 feet uh, in less than 10 minutes. Um, Yes. It is a bad idea to ask to be in the chamber while it goes to altitude, <laughs> and we have had somebody ask if they could be in the chamber when we took it to uh, 40,000 feet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I we said no. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is one that um, 
the altitude test is one that, that typically it's temperature that affects the units at altitude, although people don't think about that. Mm -hmm. um, we also combine uh, temperature and vibration, yeah. so that chamber actually wheels on top of here. We uh, hook up a tank of liquid nitrogen mm -hmm. for the cooling. It's probably one of our more severe tests. Mm -hmm. And uh, should we do the IPX? So the uh, 12.5 liters per minute. Yeah. In the, uh, I'll, I'll let you do the spray. Yeah, you, yeah. Have uh, you, you, you enjoy it. Yeah. I'll, I'll hit the on switch. And then this over here is a previous RF test chamber. It was actually designed and built to test um, RF susceptibility for a submarine door, I believe. Um, and when they took the door back, they didn't want the chamber. So we repurposed it. Uh, we do it for indoor rain and blowing rain, and also IP, which is ingress protection uh, water testing. Um, and this, this particular nozzle setup allows us to do five and six, uh, which are different spray patterns and different spray rates. Uh, IPX7 is a dunk, IPX8 is a dunk test that exceeds one meter at 30 minutes. Um, IPX8 is basically the worst thing you can think of to do with a unit as far as immersion. It can be a 24 hour immersion, it could be a 25 meter uh, depth. Uh, it's very open ended. <laughs> We're going to hook up the, and this test will be the IPX6, which is a 12.5 millimeter diameter, diameter nozzle uh, with a rate of 12.5 liters per minute. Be more severe than most people expect. So basically, your EUT will sit on top of it. Yep. <laughs> and, and quite often, um, just because of the pressure, we actually have to fix the EUT down. Um, but that is, that is, we can empty that tank in a roughly five minutes without test. Uh, it is a, a very high flow. Uh, the IPX5 is the same setup, but it uses a, a less water flow. Numerically, IPX7 is considered more severe, but when you look at being hit with that jet of water for a minute, that three minutes is a minimum, versus dunking a unit for 30 minutes, it, it really depends on what you're testing. Um, if you've got something that's got a lot of little fiddly bits, stuff that might break off, this can be much more severe than a dunk test. Um, it, it really, sometimes the requirements are called one or the other when the alternate test is, is more applicable. So. Uh, the first number is uh, physical ingress. So that would be, IP5 would be a, uh, a dust test, which is basically a dust test without a vacuum being created inside the unit. Um, the, there's one dust test, six, where you actually have to drill a hole in the unit and you put a vacuum barb on there, and you pull a negative vacuum inside the unit, then subject it to the dust test. Um, the second numeral is uh, the water. IPX2 is, I believe, uh, a very low, IPX2 is inclined, where it's basically a rain test but it's tested at a 15 degree incline and four orientations. So it's, it's as, as far as what it is, it's... Have a nozzle blasting it? No, no, it's actually, we don't have it hooked up, but the, the blue box hanging there is our... Um, rain unit. Rain, rain box, yeah. So that fills up and it drips, and then we also have inclined planes that we can put in there to kind of orient the unit um, for that, so. And it's actually kind of surprising what survives water testing and what doesn't. Sometimes the stuff you think is going to pass fine, fails hard um, It's one of the more interesting ones. We had to do one for the one meter for so many hours or right. whatever. Right. We just took it to the YMCA and asked yeah. them if they would let us yeah. put that's... the box in their pool for you know, the day. Mm -hmm. That's, that's one way to do it. And there's a lot of, um, we actually have a, a, the tall tube there that's strapped